What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Zolra. This video has been a long time coming and it has been highly requested to do one of these guides in my style. So with this guide I'm going to be showing you guys how to kill Zolra very cheaply and to get through it for that diary requirement or if you're trying to build up some KC so you can get better and make some good money per hour. Before we get into the guide, if you like seeing content by me, you can hit that subscribe button down below the video and hit that little bell icon too, it'll let you know whenever I upload new content. Also, there is a link in the description below. YouTube now has channel membership, so if you previously supported me on Patreon, I've done away with Patreon. You can support me directly on YouTube now. Getting into the guide, let's check out a little bit of background information about Zalra. If you didn't know, Zalra actually has three forms and they are different colors and they all apply to a combat style on the combat triangle. The normal form is going to be a green form and this is going to be the range form. When Zalra turns reddish or orange, this is going to be the magma form which is more or less the melee form. And when Zalra turns kind of blue, teal, and purple, this is the tanzanite form and this is the mage form. But don't let that mage form fool you. Zalra will actually throw out some range attacks on the mage form so it's more or less like a hybrid form. Zolra has a combat level of 725 and a hit points level of 500. Zolra's max hit is 41 and with the little snakelings that come around Zolra, which we'll talk about in a little while, you can get comboed out very quickly. Zolra is aggressive. Zolra's weakness is actually magic and the attack styles that it uses are listed as ranged and magic but on the magma form Zolra will poke the little tail at you and it's kind of like melee damage it is unprotectable you cannot block any of this damage even if you are praying melee as for Zolra's more specific combat stats Zolra has an attack level of 1 a strength level of 1 defense level of 300 magic level of 300 and a ranged level of 300 as for the defensive stats, these stats are actually going to change. So in the first form, which is going to be the ranged form or the normal form, if you will, Zolra has no defensive stats to the melee style because you can't hit Zolra with melee. You have to use ranger magic, but it does have negative 45 to magic and plus 50 to range. So on this form, even though Zolra's magic level is 300, we are going to be wanting to use the magic style attack. As for the defensive stats of the magma form, once again, plus zero to stab slash and crush because you can't melee Zolra, plus zero to magic and coinciding with the combat triangle, a uh, melee form is weak to magic, so we're going to want to use magic on this form as well, and plus 300 to that ranging defensive stats, so going to be pretty impossible to do some damage with range unless you're using a twisted bow. And last in the Tanzanite form, the defensive stats are once again going to be plus 0 to stab slash and crush, plus 300 to magic because this is the magic form, so we're not going to be able to use magic on this form, and plus 0 to range, so we're going to switch over to our range style for the Tanzanite form. So, how do we get to Zolra? Well, the first thing you're going to have to know is you have to have the Regicide quest completed up to the point of reaching Port Tyrus. If you don't have this done and you want to kill some Zolra, you better go ahead and get it done. But after you have reached that point, there are two ways that you can get to Zolra. The first way being the Fairy Ring Teleport, BJS, and this is going to put you on a little island here. And by using this teleport, you're going to need a agility level of 76 to cross the little stepping stone there in the river. So this might not be for you if your agility is lower. If you do have the agility level, I suggest using this method because it doesn't take that much longer to get to Zolra and it will save you some money on the Zolandra teleports, which leads me to my next way to get here. If you don't have that agility level or you can't boost for it, you can buy Zolandra teleports from the Grand Exchange, which will put you right in the middle of the Zolandra town. And then from here, you can simply run to your east to the end of the dock, talk to the priestess here, and she will take you to Zolra's island. And as usual, I do have some recommended requirements for you guys. Now, even though Zolra is a pretty high level boss and it is a bit of a learning curve to learn Zolra, trust me, you can do it with these stats on my Slayer alternate, which has 20 defense. I can do Zolra on that alternate. I even have friends that can do it on a one defense peer with some higher stats. So as for my recommended stats, the first stat I'm going to recommend that you have is at least level 75 magic. And this is going to be for the use of the Trident of the Seas or the toxic trident of the seas you will need this it the dps really helps if you want to try to use normal spells here i absolutely do not suggest it 
As for the range level, I'm going to recommend that you have a range level of at least level 80. At level 75, you can use the Toxic Blowpipe, but level 80 will give you a little bit more accuracy and a little bit more DPS. And last but not least, I'm going to recommend that you have a prayer level of at least 45, and this will allow you to use all of the overhead prayers as well as Eagle Eye and Mystic Might. Eagle Eye and Mystic Might are pretty important for that DPS increase at Zolra. All right, as for the gear setup, what we're doing here is we're looking for cheap, somewhat efficient, and minimal switches to learn. If you try to take too many switches to Zolro on your first few KC, you're probably going to plank every time, and it's not going to be a good time. So for this, we're going to be focusing on minimal switches. So I have a four-way magic switch and only a three-way switch back to range because I'm using the blowpipe, so I won't have an offhand. As for the gear that I'm currently wearing, Zolra actually starts in the green ranged form, which is weak to magic, so we will actually be starting the kill with our magic gear on, but for me, I always leave it in my inventory because the blowpipe does not allow you to use an offhand, so when I put my magic gear on to start the kill, I'll have one inventory space in case I don't use any food before I switch back to my range gear. I don't have to worry about dropping anything. It just makes it a little bit easier, one less thing to focus on. So as for this setup, I'm going with the full Elite Void outfit, but if you don't have Elite Void, you can use Normal Void as well. Still just as cheap, just takes a little bit of time to get it from Pest Control. I'm using an Ava's Assembler, but if you have an Accumulator or a Ranging Cape, that will work as well. I'm using an Amulet of Fury, because it is not too expensive and it will provide you with what you need for Zora. I'm using a Rada's Blessing, but if you don't have that, any Blessing will work. My attack weapon is the Toxic Blowpipe, and I'm using Adamant Darts in that. As for my boots, I am using brimstone boots because it will keep one switch away from us and the brimstone boots actually do offer plus three to the magic attack and plus five to the ranging attack as well as a little bit of defense bonuses. They're also a little bit cheaper than any of the god dehyde boots so for learning I think they're pretty good and I will be using a ring of recoil for one of Zolra's mechanics which we'll talk about in a little bit. Over in my inventory, the first thing you will see is my four-way magic switch. I have the Void Knight Magic Helmet and Imbued Zeradome and God Cape, but if you don't have the Imbued version, any other God Cape will work. I'm using a Toxic Trident and a Book of Darkness. As for my potions, I have a Bastion Potion, which is a combination ranging and super defense potion. I also have an Anti-Venom Plus because Zalra does Venom quite frequently, so you're definitely going to want to have one of those to stave that off. And I have four Prayer Potions. Now for the purpose of beginners, I suggest you take four Prayer Potions while you're learning. If you're still using this setup after you have maybe 50 or 60 kills under your belt, you can probably drop down to two or three. As for my food setup, I do have combo eats because once again, Zolra will use ranging attacks on the magic phase, so you'll be praying magic, and if you get comboed by the snakelings, which we'll talk about in a bit, and a ranging attack, it can hurt really bad, so you're going to want to eat up quickly. I have four carom wands for four combo eats, 12 sharks, and I also have 10 Zalandra teleports. If you're going to be using the Draman Staff method with the fairy rings, you just replace those with a Draman Staff to get there. And I also have house teleports to get out after my trip is over. As for another example of a gear setup, this one here is going to be a little bit more advanced, but if you think that you're comfortable with it, that is fine. And you can use this one. It has a couple more switches. So two more switches added to each style over in the inventory. Once again, I have the full void setup. So that's four pieces there. The Amulet of Fury for the ranging setup, Ava's Assembler, Rada's Blessing, Blowpipe, and the Ring of Recoil. What's different here is going to be I'm actually using Bandos God Dehyde boots instead of the brimstone boots. Now over in the inventory, you can see that I have a six way mage switch and I have added the occult necklace and the mystic boots to this switch. So that gives me six mage switches here and it will increase your DPS quite a bit because of that occult necklace. But like I said, don't switch over to this until you think that you are ready. If you're not ready, you'll miss switches and you'll end up killing yourself at Zora trying to do too much while you're learning so I suggest keeping it minimal with the previous gear switch maybe until you get 20 to 25 KC then start adding switches in from there and obviously gear upgrades are self-explanatory you can replace the amulet of fury with a necklace of anguish once you get there you can replace both of the boot switches with pagasian and eternal boots also once you get there and possibly a mage's book for the book of darkness but that all comes in good time 
All right, so now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's talk about the different mechanics that Zolra has. So the first one we are going to talk about is the Venom Clouds. Zolra will frequently throw out Venom Clouds on certain phases of the fight, and these Venom Clouds will deal rapid damage. Now, they don't actually Venom you, but they will deal rapid damage very quickly if you're standing or running through them. So as we go through the kill clips, I'll show you guys where to stand on which phase so you don't get Venomed by the Venom Clouds. Next mechanic is going to be the Snakelings, and Zolra will summon these throughout the fight at certain points. Now these are very annoying. They have a combat level of 90, and their max hit is 15, so they can inflict some decent damage on you, but they only have a hit points level of 1, so this is where our Ring of Recoil comes into play. If you do have the money, you can replace that Ring of Recoil with a Ring of Suffering that is charged up with a bunch of Ring of Recoil, so you don't have to change your Ring of Recoil after every trip. Generally, the Ring of Recoil will last you 2 to 3 kills. And the last mechanic is going to be what is referred to as the Jad phase. Now, if you make it far enough into the fight, there will be a part where Zalro will pop up in the normal form, but it will alternate back and forth between the magic and the ranged attacks. So you're going to have to flick your prayers back and forth between magic and ranged, and depending on what Zalro rotation it is, is going to determine which attack is coming at you first. So that's just another thing that you're going to have to memorize for Zalra. It's a very easily avoidable phase as you can block all the damage from the entire phase aside from the snakelings if they're around. So if you can hit your prayer switches this mechanic is very easy to get through. Next up I want to show you what my Zalra island looks like. So as you can see here in the screenshot I have several tiles marked. So you're going to want to go in and mark all of these tiles. Now before you start killing Zalra or before you start your first KC, what I want you to do is go in and mark all of these tiles. Don't worry about fighting Zalra, just make sure you get the tiles marked, then teleport out, and then return to Zalra when you're ready. That way, as soon as you come into the arena, you can immediately go to the starting tile and you'll know exactly where to go from following the pictures which I'm about to show you now. So up on the screen now you can see an image of Rotation 1, Magma A, and this is one of the guide pictures that I have made to go along with this video guide. All of these are in the description below and you can download them and save them and I'll show you exactly what to do with them a little bit later. So at the top left here you can see a small key, you can see a green dot that says normal, this will be the range form of Zolra. A red dot, which is the magma form or the melee form. A blue dot, which is the tanzanite or the mage form. And under that, you can see two jads. One of the dots has top half green, bottom half is blue. This means the jad phase will start with range and the second attack will be mage. And you have to go back and forth between those. And the jad that starts with the blue on top and the green on bottom is going to be a jad phase that starts with magic first and then switches to range. Now in each one of these phases, they are all numbered so you can see where you're at and remember which phase that you are on. You will see the colored dot. This is where Zalra is going to pop up if your camera is facing south. I think it is easiest if your camera is always facing south. And you will also see a pink square. The pink square is where you're going to want to be standing for each one of these phases. Now you will also see on certain squares there are protection prayers. These are the phases that you will need to use an overhead protection prayer. If there is no overhead protection prayer on the square, you will not need it for that phase. Now let's look at another picture right here. Rotation 4, Tanzanite form. Now you'll look at square 7 here and you can see two pink dots. At the beginning of this phase, you will be standing at the beginning of the arrow and where the arrow points to, you will have to move to later in that phase. These images are made to help you understand how the phases work and eventually you won't need them anymore. You'll get it down, you'll understand and remember everything. So once again, all of these images are in the description below. You can download them and save them via an imager link. Last thing I want to add about these pictures here, down at the last tile you will see a tile that says reset. If you happen to make it all the way through every phase of the rotation, on this 11th part Zolra will reset. So you'll go all the way back to phase 1, Zolra will start as the normal form and it will throw out some acid clouds or something like that. And then from there you will once again have to see which rotation it's going to be. It will not be the same rotation all the time. There's only a 25% chance that it will be the same rotation that you just did. So make sure if you do make it to that reset, pay attention and figure out which rotation it's going to be. 
All right, so now we can go ahead and jump into a kill clip. And as usual, I will talk you guys through it and I will talk you guys through the mechanics. Now, there are four different rotations that Zalra can choose to go through. I'm only going to be covering one, and that's because the mechanics are all the same in each fight, no matter what. It's just learning where you have to move to next and what style of attack that you have to use. It's basically just all memory. Once you can commit all four of these rotations to memory, you will have no problems with Zolra at all. So, like I said, it's a learning curve, a very big learning curve just because of the memory aspect of this fight. So let's go ahead and jump into a kill clip. All right, so in this kill clip, on the left here, you can see I have my rune light client open, and on the right side, I have the pictures for each phase of the Zolra fight open. So from here, I can just go ahead and click the right arrow or the left arrow when I'm searching for which rotation it's gonna be after I figure that out at Zolra. And all I did was drop it right here in a folder just named rotation. So they're the only items in there so I can just scroll through just those and that is it. So now that I have this all set up, let's go ahead and get over to Zolra for a kill. All right, so I'm here at the boat to take to Zolra's island. And now from here, I wanna give you a few tips. So first tip, we're always gonna to wanna to start with our magic gear on because no matter what rotation it is, Zolra always starts in the same form that is weak to magic. Second tip is gonna be while you are fighting Zolra in between phases, always remember to switch your prayers first before your gear. If you don't do this while you're learning, you're probably gonna to be too slow, you're gonna take some damage and your kills are not gonna be successful. As for the third tip, we're gonna look over here at the rotations. Now with the magma rotations, we have magma A and magma B. Now with these, the first, second, and third form are all going to always be the same. You're always going to be standing in the same spot. So you're not actually going to know which rotation it is until the fourth phase here. You'll see here on Magma A, fourth phase Zolra's little dot here is going to be at the top of this island on the picture. And when we switch to Magma B, it's going to be over here on the right side. So once again, on the Magma forms here, the Magma rotations, you will not know which one it is until after the third phase when the range comes up on phase four. All right, so let's go ahead and start this kill clip. Got my mage gear on, gonna go ahead, board the boat, head over to Zolra's Island. Now from here, I'm gonna wanna click on this back square here, and that is where I'm gonna wanna go first for every single rotation. Once I get here, start maging, and then from here, we're gonna go ahead and find out where we're moving next. All right, so. We have a magma form, so we won't find out what this is until we get to that fourth phase. Avoiding the tail, very easy, move back and forth here. So next is gonna be mage. I'm gonna go ahead and put my range gear on and start to range Zolra. So range, I'm gonna start moving in that direction and put my mage gear back on after switching my prayers and we know now that this is going to be rotation one magma a because zolra is here up at the top of the island if our camera is facing south get rid of the venom by anti-venoming we're going to know here that we don't have to move for this next phase because right here phase five is melee and it's going to be here in the middle so we can stay here leave our mage gear on take our overhead prey off now, if you're standing on either of these squares, you won't have to move for the melee attacks only when you're down here. Next up is going to be a magic. So we're going to go back to our magic prayer, then switch our gear, and we're going to start to uh, range Zalra with the range gear. And then from here, we're going to see that the next form is going to be ranged, and we're going to head over this way, get our range prayer on and our magic gear back on, and continue to mage Zalra. And we can see here from phase eight that it's gonna be magic. And we're gonna move from this square to this square once this venom dissipates. And let me switch there and stop talking. Back to the range gear and you can see that Zolra is using range attacks on the mage phase. So you will have to be wary of that. So now we can go ahead, get back over here. And our next phase is gonna be a Jad phase starting with range. So we're gonna switch back to this gear here. We're gonna get ready for this Jad phase. So here, and then Mage, Range, Mage, Range, Mage, Range, Mage, Range. 
and that is the Zora kill. So I know I said I was only going to do one, but let's go ahead and jump through another one just because that one was so quick. I'm going to pick up my loot, teleport back to the island. All right, going ahead. Board it and head back to the island and as soon as we get to the island I'm gonna click on the square down here mage boosting prayer on and start the next kill all right so from here it's gonna be a magma form one hit here move to the next square two hits on this one and then it's going to be two hits on this one. One hit, sorry. And then we're going to switch over to our mage prayer in our range gear. So then from here, we're going to know that Zalra's next form is going to be up here or over here. So we're going to start moving in that direction. Switch to our range prey. And get back our mage gear. So now we know that this is going to be rotation 2, magma B. And our next form is going to be the mage form, and it's going to be up here from part 5 right here. We're going to switch back to the range gear, mage prayer. I did that backwards, but I'm a little bit faster because I've been doing this for a while. Now don't be alarmed if you do get drug up here on this form. You won't have to worry about it. You'll still be out of the venom clouds. Then we're going to move back, and we're going to wait for the next phase, which is going to be the melee form. Or the magma form switch back to our mage gear we don't need an overhead prayer here once again if you're standing either here or here you won't have to move for these melee attacks only when you're down here then next is going to be ranged so we're going to move up here back to our range prayer and then we're going to trident Back over here for a mage form. Switch back to our range gear. Use some special attacks, maybe get some HP back. And Zolra is dead again. So that's it guys. Zolra is actually really easy. If you have this guide like I made over here, if you want to download the pictures and follow it, it really makes it a lot easier to actually learn. And once you get some KC under your belt, I promise you that the memory aspect will come to you. It is a little bit overwhelming at first, but once you get the memory down, you can literally do Zolra in your sleep. All right, everybody, that is going to do it for the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Zolra, and that is going to wrap up the Ultimate Beginner's Guide series. I want to thank you guys for following along with this series. I hope that all of these videos can get you started and moving in the right direction of all your OSRS bossing endeavors. If you like this kind of content, remember to hit that subscribe button down below. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up down below as well. They really help the video's popularity. With that, I will see you guys on the next series. Take it easy, everybody.